Okay, so last class, we starred your changes, right? We separate them. Will you now separate your cards again into your changes and continuities for me? So just separate them into two separate piles. In theory, that should be easy because you've already done that in the past and marked them. Okay. Now the next thing that you are going to do with these, though, is you are now going to further subdivide. Okay. So we are now going to further subdivide these into categories. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at the side that you have the most uh, cards on. More than likely, it's going to be the change side. I want you to see if there are any documents that are similar to other documents. Now, if they're completely unrelated, keep them unrelated, but you're just categorizing them. The most important thing is that you don't want to take your categories and uh, mix and match them between changes and continuities. So if you have two on each side, like the two African-American ones, don't put them together if they are one on change and one on continuity, okay? If you have any that are solo categories, just keep them into a solo category. So go ahead and categorize yours into different areas, however you want to subdivide them. If you want ideas on what kind of categories I'm talking about, what if you took the one on like the flapper in the Harlem Renaissance and you created it into a category about minorities, okay? That's what I'm referring to. That could be a category. Subcategorizing. Oh, they are. Kate. I listen. Please take your DBQ assignment period seven packet with the rubric on the front and please flip to the side with the rubric. Now, in the middle of the page on the left side, you're going to see a little bit of a blank area. What I want you to do is to make a chart that looks like this. You are now creating your categories for your essay. So you're going to make a, cat or a T chart with change of continuity. Um, make sure that when you write down what your categories are, please put the documents that you plan to use those for. Okay? And go ahead and write out your categories. It's not a blank T chart. It's in the middle of your rubric on the left hand side. There's a blank area. Yes. So please go ahead and write down your categories. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, Mr. Kruger got really mad at me. 
because I blew the circuit and all of our projectors turned off in our rooms and all of our computers turned off for all the four rooms in here. I definitely made some enemies today. How was I supposed to know plugging four toasters into the same outlet would cause a circuit to overload? Who knew? Is Skyly not here? Oh. Hey. All right, at this point, you, okay, listen. At this point, you should have made your categories. Now, here's what you need to do, okay? You need a highlighter, at least one per group. Yesterday, I had 12 highlighters. Now, I apparently have four. So if you borrow my highlighter, you need to give it back. And if you have spares, please be kind to others around you and let them borrow a highlighter. And just wrote on my screen. So please have a highlighter out. Yes. Your counter, or your uh, continuities don't have to be the same topic, right? No. Okay. So we're okay. One. So. Because these are our changes, and these are our continuities. So okay. So which of these, is there any ones that you can match with another document? These we don't mix with the changes, right? Well, what are these? Those are continuities. So these are changes. Okay. So then these ones, are there any ones that go together? I'm thinking like nativism and like eugenics. Yeah. Okay. So like that. And then, uh, this one is... Huh? Can we do this one and this one? Because it's like the rise of like... Sure. There you go. And look, category, category, wow. category. Wow. Wow. Right? <laughs> yes. A band-aid? Yes. Let me get in one second. Kate. What? Kate. Well, didn't you want one? We have one. You need one for each person. Okay. All right. Okay, listen. Here is your next step. This one's going to take a little bit of time. On the back of each of your note cards, you should have written down a list of vocabulary terms that you could use with that item. What I need you to do is on your brainstorming T-chart, your brainstorming T-chart, you are going to go through and highlight all of the terms that you wrote on the back of your note cards. So if you had them on the back of your note cards, Highlight them on your T-chart, and if they didn't show up on your T-chart, please add them and then highlight them. So you're just highlighting the ones that you wrote on the back. I have two more highlighters as needed. Yes. <laughs> nope, both. For all documents, highlight anything, whether it's on one side or the other. Thank you. Mm -hmm. as I was coming up to you and about no, to call no, her name. No, <laughs> oh, you were calling her. Oh, and she's in here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm.
That's the only terms you have for all of them? Go ahead. If you're behind, please hurry and catch up. Picture of my up there. Okay. By the way, it is highly suggested that you either have open a Google Docs where you can quickly type things that you're about to put into Pear Deck or grab out a blank piece of paper that you can be able to write down so that you have a copy of your essay. Okay. So at this point, okay, listen. At this point, you should have your categories done your documents put into specific categories. You should have highlighted all of the terms on your paper. Is everybody at that point? No? Okay. If you're not, I'm going to continue because most of the people are, so you need to really quickly catch up. Okay. So now it's time to begin our essay. Okay. Now, in theory, everything that we've done over last class and this class only is supposed to take 15 minutes on the AP exam. Now, the real, reality is, is that a lot of you guys are collaborating a bunch, so you shouldn't be too worried because once you're doing it by your own, you'll go quicker. One concern I did have that I noticed in this class compared to my other class, um, a lot of people only have six terms highlighted on their T-chart. Uh, the requirement for the no index cards was three per index card, which means in theory, if there's seven documents, you should have around 21 highlighted. So if you only have six highlighted, that's concerning to me that you're not brainstorming enough on your terms. Okay? All right. So now we're going to begin our essay. So the very first thing that we're going to do is our historical context. Now, this is very, very important with historical context. It is suggested, and if you want to put this on your rubric, by the way, so that you can, like, remind yourself, with historical context for the DBQ, it is highly suggested that you only do type one historical context. Type one historical context. This caused this. And let me explain why. There is part of this which is called outside information. On your T-chart, in the bank space between the HIP analysis and your T-chart, I would do like an asterisk and write all unhighlighted items equal outside information. So again, underneath your brainstorming chart, I would put an asterisk and say all unhighlighted items equals additional or outside information. Now, why is this important? There is a point that you get on your rubric for having outside information. What tends to happen, there's a couple ones that tend to be the most commonly missed um, points on the rubric. And one of those is outside information. And here's why. People put outside information the same as their historical context, or they have the historical context for their HIP analysis, and it's also their historical context at the beginning of the essay. So you have to be extremely, extremely careful. You can't coincide. 
Now, the other problem is, too, is in DBQ, you are practically covering the entirety of the Roaring Twenties, and it's very hard for you to find something not referenced in your essay that works as historical context, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to write our historical context. Now, how many sentences should historical context be approximately? Ten? Ten? Woo! Your essay is long. Three to four, okay? So your historical context needs to be three to four. Now, remember, when we begin our historical context, there's lots of different ways you could write this. Um, the most common ways I tend to say see is preceding the period of 1917 to 1930. Or I've seen people see, say in the context of the period of 1917 to 1930, in the context of the Roaring Twenties, however you want to do it. Okay, now what you need to do is you need to pick a topic that precedes the Roaring Twenties but directly caused the Roaring Twenties. And there's one really big one that you could probably put. Does anybody have a guess? World War I. World War I. That's probably the best. Now, World War I is the easiest in this context because it caused practically everything. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to write a historical context for World War one. Okay. Now, remember, when you do a historical context, you could do something like in the context of 1917 to 1930, World War One was a, uh, or like preceding this, World War One became a, and then remember, define, explain. Now, the important thing to note too is that you could do this either way you want. You could talk about the causes of World War One and why America became involved in it. You could talk specifically about America's involvement whatever you want. Now, the important thing, though, about this for DBQs is with type 1, you must have a sentence explaining how it connects. So at the end, the most common way that people have been doing it is something along the lines of, like, after the signing, if you want to be fancy, after the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, America shifted, you could say something like, shifted towards normalcy, so remember Harding's normalcy, and isolationism, this directly led, and then describe your time period. You could also do this in other ways too. I saw yesterday some people said, uh, the impacts of World War I on the home front directly led to many developments that occurred during the Roaring Twenties. Something along those lines. So what I want you to do, yeah? And so that would you have to define what the Treaty of Versailles and the actual... Act no, because remember, this is just historical context. Okay. Now, there's a difference, though, in saying during preceding the period of 1917-1930 was World War I. After the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, do you see how that kind of just skips? So that's different. But remember, some people like to write as apparently Raj does, 10 sentences for historical context, you don't have to do that, okay? So I'm going to open up your Pear Deck, brainstorm with your group how you're going to write your historical context. Okay, you should be good to go to write it. word fluff. My favorite is when somebody's like, across the waves of the Atlantic, as the battles went on from the dawn to the dusk. And I was like, oh. Uh. What's up? That's up to you. But you shouldn't be using any terms in your essay. So anything that you put in your brainstorm chart should not be used in this unless you're connecting it to the Roaring Twenties. Okay? Yeah, I'm just saying, like, for 
Well, I don't know what you're referring to specifically. So what term are you referring to? Using stuff like the Treaty of Versailles or explaining how it, how the war began. That's fine. So with the, um, yes. As long as it's not going to be terms that you use in your essay about the Roaring Twenties. Remember, you only need three to four. Are you helping? Which is a great transition. If you're still working, take about one more minute. What do they give you for spelling wise? Um, they give you a lot of breaks because it's considered a first draft, which means that they cannot take it away if they can accurately tell at least what you're referring to. Please put your answers into Pear Deck. <laughs> You guys are weird. So you'll be starting parts of it, and then you'll be writing your own. Cause like how we did when we did the boot camp, yeah. You have to describe terms. Okay, I'm about to put it on the screen. All right. Now remember, if I criticize your historical context, it's because I love you, and I want you to do better. So don't take offense to it. That's why it's anonymous. Okay. All right, let's see what we got here. Before the period of 1917-1930, World War I occurred. World War I was caused by militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism. The war started in 1914 and in 1918 with American involvement, blah. After the Treaty of Versailles was signed, the United States adopted Harding's Normalcy and Isolation directly leading to the Roaring Twenties. Awesome. Good. Okay. Uh, I can already tell this one's good because it's long. Uh, let's go to this one. Proceeding the period 1970-1930, World War I was fought. It began due to a Serbian assassins. I like that. Um, wait. Oh, technically, our Duke Franz Ferdinand II. Oh. That's okay, so we'll don't, forgive don't you. Order the two. Just say Ferdinand. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said that one dude that went to a, a convenience store and died. Just put that. Uh, United States was. Shh. 
Listen, the United States was drawn into the war after seeking Lusitania as well as the description of the Zimmerman note. After signing the Treaty of Versailles, America reverts to normalcy, which led to the Roaring Twenties. I would say Roaring Twenties is traditionally capitalized, but that's just me being picky. Good. All right. Let's see this one. This one looks like it might need some help. Preceding the period of 1970 to 30, World War One caused great change. Some of the aforementioned changes were women's roles after the war. After the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, America shifted towards normalcy and isolationism. This does not work. Okay. Reasons why it doesn't work is one, you're basically going into your essay right here, so that doesn't count as a sentence. This one's okay, but you're saying World War I caused great change. This, so technically, I guess you could say that honestly this and this are basically your essay. So you need to tell me more about what is World War I. Tell me about World War I, because if not, this does not count as historical um, context. And then in the context of the period of 1970, 1930, World War I was just concluding. War World War <laughs> One in World War One. Okay. Here's what I. Okay. Stop. I already know which group it is too, because I can see you typing. Um. Here's what I'll tell you. None of this is historical context. Okay. You must talk about what World War One is, because you're actually talking entirely about your essay here. Now, if you had expanded World War One propaganda and talked about like. Uh, the CPI or something like that, I would have accepted it, but this does not count. Does anybody have any questions about historical context? Okay, if you're one of mine, needs some changes, which it looks like only two groups really need changes, make a few changes, make sure everybody in your group has this written down or it's copied somewhere so that you can have a note of it for later on. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, listen. Okay. Based on what you already know so far, what comes next in your essay? Your thesis. Very nice. Now, remember on your thesis, though, you are supposed to have how many categories on each side of your T-chart? Three on each side. Okay, so listen. Okay, listen, this is important. Most of you will have a T-chart that does not have three on each side yet. Most of you will have maybe three on one side, only a single one on the other. So guess what you get to fill in the blanks with? Outside information. Outside information, that's right. So now what you need to do is looking through your T-chart, you're going to want to pick out of your non-highlighted items, the ones you feel most confident in explaining, okay? So for me, I knew that the teapot dome scandal was nowhere mentioned in my document. So I added political distrust as one of my categories. I also saw that there was really nothing specific about eugenics or the idea of a perfect society. So I put perfect society, okay? That's what I added in. So you need to, with your group, Make sure there's three on each side. Now, if you have four on one side, you need to further condense those down because you only need three categories, okay? So go ahead and make three categories on each side. Mm -hmm. or, so we have three on the side, you have and one. one. So you need to add two more on the continuities. But they don't need to have documents in it? No. Have, okay. no. So again, these categories are outside information. What that means for you, you do not have to have a document attached to have a count. You need no documents. So again, you don't need any documents attached to these other categories. Go ahead and create six total. And we'll talk about why that is in a little bit. Check who you're what? You're wanting me to read the historical context? I, uh, you have a typo. During the war on of the inventions. 
And then an event that occurred was World War One. I. I would instead say preceding the period of 1917-1930, uh, World War One caused many changes in American society. Yeah. And then you have to... Okay, that's fine. Okay. Make sure, give about 30 more seconds to make sure that you have six total categories. No, you can give a single example. Okay. So, so you, you don't need distress. any more than that. Oh, so right. 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 Yes. Okay. And then what if you did for the other one, Harding's normalcy? For continuity or change? It's right here. So I'm assuming you're saying it's continuity, which it is. Yeah. Instead of nativism? Because we have three over here. Well, okay. well, the, well, I, I didn't see hers. Only had two. Why did you do that? Okay. So we have terms for this, but we need the broader thing, right? Like, well, so yours is doing monopolies. How many monopolies can you reference in the 1920s? Okay, I can't. <laughs> So this is not even a category you can use. Okay. So social Darwinism works. Conscious consumption works. Harding's normalcy. Nativism. Okay. So are you already doing women's rights? Because you have it over here too. Okay. Listen. Okay. At this time, you are now going to be creating your thesis. Okay, so for your thesis, here's what you need to do. Okay, remember that our thesis is although A, B, C, X, Y, Z occurred. Okay, so an easy way to be able to do this on this chart that you've created is to just put next to each of these A, B, C. C, X, Y, Z. That's the easiest way because then you know you're plugging it in correctly. Okay? So now we have to create our thesis. So we have to remember a few things. First off, we must answer the question. Okay? Can't just start running things off. Second, we must specifically reference our categories. So if I were to do something such as, although... A, B, and C caused social and cultural tensions, caused cultural and sens okay, wait, caused social and cultural change, change as the change and tension. To a, and you, since tension words hard, if you want to truly use language with the question, you're supposed to have it in there. If you feel like it doesn't work, take it out. But I'm just going to keep it in there. To a, and remember, one of the things that it asks is how, what extent. So you can say to a great extent. And then you can say their continued, so continuities. They're continued, wait, or you could put, there were many, you can be it as simple as things that stayed the same, which is an uh, easy word for what? Yeah, I'm just suiting it simple, but yeah, continuities, stayed the same, or continuity, however you want to do it. Including, including yeah, such as, or including X, Y, and Z. So my full thesis would be, although an increase in minority rights, political distrust, and the rise of the celebrity caused social and cultural changes and tensions. I don't like that. Caused social and cultural changes in the period of 1917 to 1930. To a great extent. There were many things that stayed the same, including, 
an increase in industrialization, the formation of the perfect society, and rampant spending. Got it? Yes. Hold on. No, because you're just rephrasing the wording of the question. Your thesis can be wordy, but what makes it different is some people are writing like giant paragraph theses. You don't need that. Okay, go ahead and create in your group your thesis based on your categories and words, and please put them into Pear Deck. My one yesterday was way better. Then change the words. So what's your change? What are you saying is a change in religion? Uh, like, uh, like one, like, the the same, and then we're also doing, like, uh, I know, the other two parts? So what if you did for the KKK the use of religion in causing racial discrimination? Oh, okay, okay. So, and then the other one you could just do, you could change it instead of saying religion, uh -huh. say views on evolution. Oh, okay, okay. So you just you can just change the word. So if you are using, shh, listen, shh, a very common one that tends to get overlapped. Hey, if you want to listen to this, a lot of people are using religion in two categories. They're using one in change for evolution scopes monkey, and they're also doing it stayed the same for continuities for the KKK. Don't use religion in both because then they'll say, wait, they're saying religion is a change and a continuity. Instead, change the wording. So instead of saying changes in religion, say changes in views on evolution. Okay? Or instead of saying religion is a continuity, say the use of religion in discrimination. Does that make sense? Just change the words. Okay, you should be almost done with your thesis, and it should be almost in your computer. Ready? All right, let's do it. Okay, let's look at your answers. All right. Okay, quiet. I'm locking it because some of you are trying to change it so that you don't look. Okay. All right. <laughs> hmm. I don't remember putting that into my example. Okay. All right, listen. Shh. Although shh. an increase in minority rights, the Scopes Monkey trial, and the rise of celebrities caused social and cultural change in the period of 1970 to 1930 to a great extent, 
There are many things that remain continuous, such as blah, blah, blah. All this, though, probably should not be included on your essay. Okay, good. Although the changes in new event, why are these capitalized? <laughs> okay, uh, although the changes of shh, new advancements might, hey, guys, we're not going to be able to get through this if you're not quiet. Although the changes of new advancements, migration, and views of evolution caused social and cultural tensions to the fullest extent in the period 1917 to 1930, religion, conscious consumption, and Harding's numeracy remain the same. The only thing I would possibly do is I would maybe be more specific on this religion because they're going to be like, yeah, obviously religion stayed the same during this time period because we've always had religion in America. Just be careful with that. Um, most of what I'm seeing is good. So I think you guys are good to go. Okay, so make sure you have these down. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. Make sure you have it copied and down so that you don't have to redo it. Quickly do that, though, so we can move on. How to change change to a great extent, but you have, although minority speakeasies and races caused political and social changes in the period of 1917 to 1930, comma, to an extreme extent, there were many things that stayed the same. That's not your question. You're actually doing the exact opposite of what your question is asking you to do. So this great extent must change and be put into the changes. Um, I don't think that is a, oops, I don't think this is a good term. Okay. I would change it to prohibition. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay, not right now. All right. Okay. If you guys, by the way, don't get it in in time or you wanted me to read it and I didn't read it on the board, I don't have time right now because I have to continue the lesson. If I read everybody, it's going to take too long. So you can always stay after a few minutes after class. But just be aware, I'm okay with checking a couple people's, but we have to move on. Sound good? Okay. Now, if you will do me a favor and look on your rubric. Good news. You have just earned two of your seven possible points. Woo! Yeah, getting there. So, the good news is, if you're on the AP exam and your mind is, like, blown and you can't remember a darn thing, you can at least get now a minimum of two points. That means you get a one. Not necessarily. Hey. Two points you can actually get a two on if you do go on multiple choice. So you now have two points. So now we're going to get into the actual meat of the essay. So here's what I need you to do. On your categories, I want you to pick one of your categories that has a document attached to it that you feel passionately that you could easily explain please only pick a category that you're going to be picking one document out of it but please only pick one category that you feel extremely passionate about right now yes you are skipping ahead we're teaching this right now okay all right has everybody please grab your note card for that document by the way you will need it Okay. All right, listen. Shh. Okay. Listen. So we are now getting into our body paragraphs. Guys. Okay. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to be able to teach you, so I'm going to do this the absolute best of my ability. Okay. Now, here is what you are going to do. Okay. You're going to pick one of these categories. For me, I'm going to do an increase in industrialization because that's the one I want to be able to do. If you're doing the same one as me, great. Please don't copy me, okay? Be inspired, but don't copy it down, okay? So the first thing you need to do, remember, when you begin your paragraphs is you need to write your topic sentence. 
So with your group, please write your topic sentence introducing it. So for mine, I'm doing continuities first. So I'm going to do, during the period of 1970 to 1930, there were uh, several continuities such as X, Y, and Z. Please go ahead and write your topic sentence. It's whichever one you want. You're doing whichever one you want, whether it's change or continuity. Please make sure you pick the category that has a document. That's very important. If you've already put it on something else, you can also go ahead and put it onto your pair deck. You'll add to it later. Okay. All right, listen. All right, so here is your next step. Just like an LEQ, you must now take this term, define it, and explain why it's important. Now remember, this is a CCOT essay, so you must explain how it is either a change or a continuity. Now, it's important to be able to use what is in your document. So I'm doing Doc G on Henry Ford's Model T. So this is what I wrote for mine. During the period of 1917 to 1930, there were several continuities such as X, Y, and Z. One example, which is a great way to lead in, of a continuity were the continuous attempts to industrialize and improve factories and consumer goods. Henry Ford, so now we have my document, Henry Ford's Model T was the first car to be economically affordable for Americans. This was done through the assembly line where every person had one job. Now I'm getting into the why. Why is it a continuity? This is similar to the creation of the radio. Then I would do a, kind of a little bit of how this is an example of an industrialization showing how it's a continuity. Then you end it by putting in parentheses doc blank. So mine is doc G. Okay. So again, notice how in this, I introduced my paragraph. I defined what is a model T, why it's important and how it continues to be a continuity during this time period. Okay. Now, if I were to do this as a change, so if I were to do this as, I don't know, I don't know, that's kind of hard, but if I were to do this as a change, I would say this was different then when America continued to be a rural environment or how are you ever going to do it? That would be a really hard essay, but do you see what I'm meaning? Yeah. So what I want you to do to do your best, create your entire paragraph and remember at the back or the end of it to do doc whatever you're doing. Okay, go ahead and get started. Use your note cards to kind of guide you and remind you what these documents are about. Okay. So one example... 
Or do you use, like, one example is, like, the continuous... Use of social Darwinism? Yeah. You're using that up here, so this is fine. Now what you have to do is you have to say social Darwinism is, and define it, and then you now must explain how it was continued to be used in the 1920s. Oh, yours is a continuity? Yeah. Yes. So how it continued to be used in the 1920s. Because what you might want to do is introduce it a little bit and say something like, prior to the 1920s, social Darwinism was used to justify imperialism. Now, this is how it's being used today as a continuity. Well, continuities, you have to show how it's continuous. So if you give one example, say another example, continu or another example during this time period was this. No, 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 no. It's very, very bad to use quotes. They do not like quotes. You, well, you're going to reference it, so what are you specifically referring to? Like, he says that, like, she wants the artist to flatter her to make the white world believe that all Negroes are so not getting near weight as her soul. So then what you would say, so what you would say here, because that's how you're referencing this and making sure it's known here, you could say, like, during the Harlem Renaissance, African Americans began to feel that there was a racial superiority, and you're referencing the document in that way. I think, I think it's... So you need, where's your intro sentence to your paragraph? The status of minorities. Oh, no, I see. Okay. Sorry, that was okay. Okay, that's fine. And then what do you put at the end? Stop. Yes. Um, so in World in Europe, we would have to like do quotes to take quotes out of this. You're not supposed to do quotes. If Watts told you to do that, readers hate when you quote. Oh. So we don't have to do that. No. Okay. Hey guys. I. I'm not saying that another teacher is wrong. I'm just saying that if you were taught in another AP course to use direct quotes out of the documents, you're not supposed to do that. So you do not have to, you're not supposed to. Readers don't like that. Yeah. Because what happened is, is that why they say that too. So in New York, you have to take what's called a Regents exam. It's like the stage test, but required for everyone. In their essays in that state, you must use direct quotes in your essay. And they said it's directly affected New York from getting lower scores on the AP exam because they're relying on quotes rather than actually talking about what's in the document. Besides, if it's a graph, how are you going to quote it? Yeah, so you don't have to. So instead, so let me give you an example. So for instance, their change over here is the Harlem Renaissance. And so how they reference the document into what they were saying is they said many prominent Harlem Renaissance artists, such as Langston Hughes, well, who wrote the document? Langston Hughes. Okay, go ahead, keep going. Cultural explosion works fine, though, because that's actually part of the terminology. Oh, okay. Yes, this is just, this is getting used to you don't have to rely on that. But this, yeah, you, honestly, because about this one, you wouldn't really be able to use it for much of anything. Because you should know what this is, yeah, yeah. right? This is trying, yeah, this is trying to train you 
to not rely on just the sourcing to identify what the document is talking it's just, about. It's, okay. The picture is there to bring the word to your head so you can talk about it. Yeah, because what happens is, is that we, well, never mind, I'm going to reference that in a second. You are referencing it. So all you have to say is the quota system, because if you just talk about the quota system, all you do is at the bottom, doc A, and it counts. You don't have to say, like, in the image showing the quota system. No, in fact, that's wrong. You know what, though? That's okay. If, here's what I'll say. If you did it, it wouldn't have taken away your points. You just would have had a reader say they don't know how to write a very nice essay in English. Remember, if your paragraph is three sentences, you're probably not doing this correctly. You, it should be a good little chunk for your essay. Did I already open the Pear Deck, right? I already did. Once you've done that, go ahead and copy and paste it into Pear Deck, please. You're only doing referencing one. Okay. Don't jump ahead. Yes. Because if not, you guys are going to, well, plus I don't want you to skip ahead, do something wrong, and then be frustrated with yourselves because you have to redo it. And be like, wow, Miss Ray's making me do everything. Well, told you not to. Okay. So basically, for the document, I'm just taking the ideas. Yes, exactly. All you have to do is take the ideas of the document. That's what's called interpreting and analyzing a document. You, if you want to do that, go ahead. You don't have to. Here's the reason why. is because a lot of people will just reference, like all they'll do is they'll say that. So they'll say, during the 1920s, they wanted the artist to flatter her to make her white and believe all Negroes are smug. This was an example of how people treated African Americans. Do you see how I never really said what the document was about? So what happens is, while you can, it's not very nice, but while you can, people begin to use it as too much of a crutch and rely on the quotes. Whereas they want you to analyze the documents. But you don't have to, well, you just, if you're doing what you just told me, then you're fine. Okay? Take about two more minutes. You guys doing okay over here? Will you read this and tell us if we're done? And also, with, wouldn't that music, like, jazz, be like, the, like the genre? It, it, here's what I'll tell you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. They're not going to get mad at you. Some people will say jazz should be capitalized because it's a proper noun of a music type. Some people say it's lowercase. It's whatever you feel like. I'm not going to write R&B in, like, little R. Well, would you write pop then as... Big letter? Yeah. Yeah, I would like, okay. I would like, with a capital P. I guess it just in the capital I. Yeah, turn it <laughs> Capital A. Remember how we I talked know. about people saying this, 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 and this yes. caused this, yes. and this caused this, and this, this caused. Did. So I would watch that because you have that right yeah. here where you said this sparked the Harlem Renaissance, this allowed for yeah, more self permission. Yeah. I would say um, self-expression became self-expression in African Americans became more common with the invention of jazz music and whatever you want to do. And then what do you put at the end? Sorry, I just wanted to know if we yes. were done. So I would say you're good. Because, okay. I would say you're good. Well, wait, is your doing it a change? Yeah. So we have. To I would just say this from? was a change from before where African Americans felt like they couldn't express okay. themselves in SETI. Make sure you're telling me what the change of the continuity is. Make sure you're saying how it's a change or continuity. Does this work? Um, this is in the wrong spot. This needs to be at the end. And you're saying that it was a change but you need, never really said what the change was. You just said it was a court case that debated religion versus science. You say, this was a change from traditional religious views taught in school. Okay. Make sure you tell me what the change is. Is there any about the minorities? And like, we, um, 
Like since women and African Americans are two separate like things, but they're in one category, are we supposed to talk about the change? I would like, talk about the change with women first, okay, okay. and then say like Another this was African similar Americans. to the changes of African Americans. Okay. Yes. You do a lot of capitals. <laughs> so, you never really told me what the document was talking about. Okay. So you never really, so you said this continued during the Harlem Renaissance, how? Okay. So, why? You never really told me anything, so no, that one wouldn't work. Did you put this on Pear Deck yet? Because I want to project some, some things up. Okay. All right, let's see how you guys did. Hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> you guys embarrass me. Okay, here we go. There's ten groups, but only six responses. Hurry and submit it as I slowly go towards the button. Here I go. What? Oh, here we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Hey, you guys, listen. Okay. During the period of 1917 to 1930, well, I could already see something wrong in here. What goes at the end of your paragraphs? Okay. They were so busy doing the bottom. Okay, listen. Okay. Hush, my wonderful students. Okay. During the period of 1917 to 1930, there were several... Guys, we have to record this, too, so that the people at home know what to do. Okay. During the period of 1970 to 1930, there were several examples of changes to increased minority rights, the skills monkey trial, and the rise of celebrities. One example of these changes is the massive increase in minority rights. The African-American community in the United States began migrating north in search of economic prosperity in an urban environment. Dubbed. Dubs. <laughs> the Great Migration. This increase in... Okay, wait. This increase in migration led to the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was the social artistic explosion of African-American culture. Example of this is Langston Hughes. Oh, look at our document. And his writing concerning the plight of African Americans. This was, yeah. So this is great. The, uh, now they have Doc B, it works. Because if not, if they don't get it counted in the AP exam. So make sure you reference them. You might have noticed some of your grades on the Game of Fates and the HIP analysis were less than full credit. If that was you, it was because you didn't put the docs at the end. And I was trying to remind you, put docs at the end. Okay. The only thing I would probably change is this transition is a little weird. I probably would have put, uh, began migrating north in search of economic prosperity uh, in an urban environment during the Great Migration and then change it because it sounds a little wonky. Okay, good. Uh, this looks really similar to mine. That looks really similar to mine. If this is yours, please don't write the same thing as me. Okay. Um, okay. Let's look at this. One example of a change was the increase in the rights of minorities, specifically women. Women's rights increased after women became more politically involved during World War I, leading to the 19th Amendment. 
19th Amendment was this. Flappers were young women who challenged social society norms. African American, oh, okay. Yeah, you could do that. So what they did is they immediately transitioned into another document. Probably what I would do to make it clear to your reader which docs you're referring to, I would take, I think D is, which one? Is it B that's on flappers? D. So instead, I would, right after this one right here, the rise of the flapper helped women overcome the cult of domesticity, I would put doc D here so it's more clear which one is which. Okay? All right. So, please grab out your rubric again. Okay. All right, listen. Okay. So, I have some great news for you. But, close. By doing the two things that you just barely did, defining and explaining those, as long as you do them over more documents, you have just earned two more points on the DBQ. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> no, actually a four is considered a high score on a DBQ. So a four out of seven is considered high. Um, Wait, what does this say that? It says four is a three on AT. Okay, so that's, that's because like that's, well, three is a pass. Yeah, it's a certain... Okay, so we're just trying to pass, pass it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, listen. Some of you getting like really hyper. Yes. So this is about like quoting the DBQs and you're saying like I know many people have like gotten points of five who have done that, but like should you just not do it? It's it's what you're comfortable with because I now know that Mr. Watts teaches me to quote. Um, the reason why I say be careful is what happens is that people use the quotes as a crutch. So for example, If you go to the document on African American rights, what some people do is there were many expansions in, or they did a continuity, but, so they did. Uh, during the 1920s, there was a continuous amount of racism in America. For example, the artist, quote, wanted to flatter her, make her the white world believe that all Negroes are smug and a near as white a soul as she wants to be. Quote, this shows how there was a continued racism in America. Did I ever actually analyze the document? No. no, I'm just saying it's racism and I'm putting a quote. Now, if you want to take that and expand it into an analysis, then great. What just happens with people quoting is people don't ever actually analyze the documents. So do what you feel comfortable. If you learned in Watts class or in Pickett's class to quote, then cool. Just be very cautious that you don't use the quotes as a crutch. Make sense? Okay, so you have now just earned four out of the seven points. Now, on your rubric, okay, you are going to notice two things. First off, under evidence, where it says three documents defined, if all I put is one example of a continuity was Henry Ford's Model T was the first car to be economically affordable for Americans, just this sentence alone with this is that first point. It's super, super basic. Literally, if you just identify and define the term that's in there, you're good. Now, this is different than saying there was a continuity in Henry Ford's Model T. That's different. But if you just identify the term and define it in each document, you only need to have three documents done and you get a point. In my class, if you want to write it down, it's going to be four. You must have four documents. If you want to put that down on your rubric for the first one, you must have four documents. Okay, to get that point. That's to allow you, because some people are like, oh, I only need three. I'm only going to do three. Well, what if you mess up one of the three? You missed it. You missed it all. Okay. The next one is where it says six documents explain why they answer the question. In my class, you will do that for all the documents, which is seven. Okay, or eight sometimes. So you need seven or all the documents to find explain. So basically what I'm saying is in my class, you reference every single one. And the reason why is, again, uh, there was somebody that I read over the summer where they had six documents. Five of them were incredible. And one of them, they misanalyzed the document and they lost all the point. Okay? So this allows you one little safety net to make sure that you don't do that. Okay? So now you have uh, four of the seven points. 
Now, if you will look at the very last one on this, which is outside evidence, all you have to do is reference in my class two on the AP exam, one single piece of outside evidence not mentioned. So on your uh, chart, all the non-highlighted, if you reference one of them, you now get the fifth point, okay? All you have to do is to find and explain it. So if you remember my example that I had on the board, which this is new, by the way, this year, in case you wanted to know. Whiteboard? No. Um. <laughs> the, this point. Uh, this outside evidence point is different than how it used to be. So if I took this, this is similar to the creation of the radio, and then I expand on the radio. Was the radio ever referenced in your documents? No. no. So I just got the point. Was the Great Migration ever specifically mentioned? No. So what about all those people who just referenced the Great Migration? What did you just get? Outside. Your outside information point. Do you see how nice that is? Now, this is why I highly suggest making a T-chart every single time that you write an essay. And the reason why is because this allows you to identify what is outside information compared to what you're writing about. This is, by the way, in my opinion, the hardest point to get is because people don't outline before. This is why I say an LEQ is so important to learn first. Because if you write just like an LEQ and then add the documents in, you'll get outside information. But this is the number one hardest point to get. Okay? So now how many points do we have out of our seven? Five. Oh, look, we're almost there to a five. Okay. Now look on the far right analysis and reasoning section of your rubric and look at the second one. If you reference both sides of the argument, as in change and continuity, guess what you just got? Another point. You've just got six points out of seven. And that's a five. And now, that's a five on the AP exam. I, well, we're at a great range technically because the five on the AP exam is very good. So you can now... So now at this point, you know how to do everything but one section, okay? So our last section is a hip analysis, okay? Now, the important thing about this, by the way, is if you will do on your rubric where it says the hip analysis section, which is the top one of your analysis and reasoning, circle like a bunch of times the number three. In my class, it'll be four, okay? But understand you don't have to do it for every document. And you only have to do one of the four analysis points. As in, you only have to do the H. Or you only have to do the P for each document. Okay? So, it's extremely easy to get. Okay? Now, this is where you get that hip analysis point. So if I were doing a hip analysis for this document, okay, which we're going to start today, we probably won't finish, well, we won't even be able to start today, but I'm just going to introduce it, okay? So what you do is very easy. After you have done all of this and put your doc, now you do a hip analysis for your document, okay? So if I were to do mine, I would say something along the lines of, sorry, I did it really well yesterday. I don't want to forget it because I like the one I did yesterday. Okay. So, if I said something for my hip analysis along the lines of advertisements for the Model T. So, I've just referenced my document. Okay. Advertisements for the Model T were created to increase sales in America. Okay. So, I've just... Uh, done. Does anybody know which one I'm doing, by the way, for hip? I'm doing purpose. That's what the purpose was. It was created to increase sales in America. Okay. This led to a continuity in conscious consumption or rampant spending. Now what do I do once I've said these terms? Define and explain them. And then at the very bottom, all I do is I can put doc G here, and I can scratch out this one. You just have to have it at the bottom of the whole thing. Do you guys see how easy it is on a DBQ? It's really not that hard, okay? So what we're going to do 
is next class period, we will spend about 15 minutes finishing how to do a hip. So we'll do one example of a hip. I'll then show you how to outline it. You will have two weeks to do it on your own time. It is not due before. I also don't want to give you homework over spring break, which is why I'm not making it due after spring break. I know a lot of you guys are going on vacation. So what I want you to do is you're going to have a lot of time to be able to do this. And yes, there are rewrites. Sound good? Yes. Awesome job today. Good job. Let's, and Tim says good job to everyone. So obviously that's a yeah. great honor. So put your desk back. Please put your Chromebook, uh, Chromebooks back into the cart. Uh, flashcards. Listen. Flashcards, please put on this empty desk in front of Amelia. So please put it on this empty desk over here. Put your Chromebooks away. I saw a hand. <laughs>